the hell was that? What the hell was that? I don't know. I am pregnant. You just keep suckering me into these kids. I wasn't like planning this. I can't this. handle this responsibility. He's just like severely depressed. He just makes up whatever like pills he thinks he needs to take. Scott, no, Scott. Oh my God. No, no Scott. I hate him. I hate him. No. You're walking to the beach. You're walking to you. Look at you, you Shut the f up. He pushed me out of the way. How old are you? 82. We need to call the police. Scott Disick was a terrible father and boyfriend. He could care less about his children or what Courtney had to go through. Scott spent his nights partying with strip in Vegas and paying random women to suck their dirty feet at the bar. The way that Scott treated Courtney is unacceptable. So let's get into it. <music> Getting started with Bright Sellers is super easy. First off, I take their quick quiz on my flavor palette. I selected white chocolate, Arnold Palmer, and margarita. And then I matched with unique wines from all over the world. When I'm finishing up editing videos and unwinding from the day, I love to open up a bottle from my Bright Cellar box and learn about the wine I'm enjoying. They include these handy informational cards that explain everything you need to know. Bright Cellars is a wine subscription service, and this month I was sent a bunch of delicious wine. For example, this bottle of Petit Verdot by Obscura has flavors of berries with hints of mocha, spice, herbs, and earth. You guys should check it out using my link below and sign up. It is so nice to save money on wine through Bright Cellar's subscription service. And it's even better to have wine handy for when friends come over or for whenever I'm cooking dinner after a stressful day. I know you guys are going to love this wine. And thanks to Bright Cellars for giving my followers a limited time offer of $100 off their subscription. Click the link in my description description to get started. Thank you Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video and enjoy. Ever since Kourtney Kardashian got with Travis Barker, it seems like Scott Disick is in the past, but I'll never forget how toxic his relationship was with Kourtney. And today I want to talk about their worst moments and what led to their breakup. Kourtney Kardashian and her longtime partner, baby daddy Scott Disick, have finally decided to call it quits after drunken meltdowns, a paternity scandal, sex allegations, a rehab stint, and loads of bickering. You reek. You look like shit. Your eyes look like you aged about 20 years. I'm trying to catch up to your old age. <laughs> E! Network definitely captured some of the Kardashians' worst moments, and you guys may remember the show Keeping Up with the Kardashians. There's also been a ton of spinoffs, and once upon a time there was a spinoff where we saw a lot of Scott Disick and what he's capable of doing, and I wanted to play this clip with you guys because I feel appalled seeing Scott get so violent and drunk and just incredibly messy. During season two of the Keeping Up with the Kardashians spinoff, Courtney and Chloe take Miami. Kim and Courtney and eight month old baby Mason return home after dinner to the place smelling like weed. Courtney gives Mason to Kim and goes to investigate where Scott is and what he's doing. Then this happens. Okay, well, I'll give a I'll break you. Hey, you psycho. You're the psycho. that so then obviously Courtney tells Kim they need to leave and then they hear what Scott does next what the hell was that what the hell was that I don't know and yeah that sounds pretty scary but then we get a look at what really really happened um he just cut his hand really bad what did you do did you he just punch punched it? the mirror he stresses me out, and I feel like Courtney was so stressed throughout their entire relationship. Scott had a terrible reaction when Courtney told him that she was pregnant with their third baby. 
He told her, you just keep suckering me into these kids. I just can't handle this responsibility, which um, is pretty alarming because you already have two kids. So like a third one, like seriously, like you aren't really doing that much work. In 2014, we got to see Scott's reaction to finding out that he was going to be a dad for the third time. How exciting, right? I am pregnant. All right, such. <sighs> oh well, he's speechless. Okay, he's overcome with emotion. You just keep suckering me into these kids. I wasn't like planning this. I can't this. handle this responsibility. Responsibility for what? I just can't take care of more you kids. You have two children. I can't imagine being Courtney and being pregnant with someone's child and then having them react that way, especially after you have like two already. Like, what's the big deal? Back in 2014, we saw a lot of Scott's bad side on the show Courtney and Chloe Take the Hamptons. At one point, Courtney actually leaves the home that they are filming in, and Scott decides to get super drunk, and ugh, it just looks so messy and bad and embarrassing. Courtney's gone. So he's acting like a drunk college kid when he should be acting like a father. And it gets even worse. And I wonder sometimes what these producers were thinking because they obviously can see that Scott's not doing well. So why do they continue filming him? I mean, I guess it's to make good television, but no one is really helping him when he's kind of crying out for help while he's battling his addiction. I mean, clearly he's got mental health issues and he's getting crazy drunk like this while he's around people who are filming him and his bodyguards and just you know as soon as his girlfriend gets away he loses himself come on Slip. let's go let's go buddy please Drew, you're a bodyguard? No, I'm not. You're not my life coach. It must have been difficult for Courtney to handle this because she's not only dealing with his addiction, but also his depression. That same year, while they were in the Hamptons in 2014, Scott swallowed an entire bottle of sleeping pills and then checked himself into the hospital. Courtney said that Scott called her and said that he wasn't going to make it and that he was going to have to get his stomach pumped. Call 911 now, get someone there immediately. So I guess maybe he was there alone and needed her to call 911. I'm not entirely sure. I think a lot of times people write off Scott Disick's behavior because he's, you know, kind of a dude bad character but i think at this point in his life he was really struggling because his parents had just died and he was really trying to figure out what to do with himself both of his parents died very closely together his mother bonnie passed away in october 2013 and she died at the age of 63 scott is an only child and he was devastated by the loss of his mother he was very close to her Scott's dad then died a few months later in January 2014, also at the age of 63, and at that point he was battling cancer. Scott said the sudden death of both of his parents just a few months apart made him severely depressed, but Courtney apparently hasn't offered much support. I guess at some point Scott went to a spa on the show, and Chloe later accused her sister Courtney of being emotionless. Courtney was quoted saying, it makes me feel helpless because there's not much I can do. So it seems like Courtney doesn't really know how to handle emotions. And when it came to Scott's and his parents dying, she just kind of fully checked out and he had no support. I also think a big problem in their relationship was the fact that Courtney never 
ever wanted to marry Scott. It wasn't on her radar. And you guys saw how quickly she married Travis Barker. So, I mean, there's a red flag. This article reports that Courtney adamantly refused to marry the party boy over fears that it would only result in a very costly divorce because of his drinking problem. A source says that Courtney also doesn't believe in the institution of marriage after seeing what it did to her parents, Chris Jenner and Robert Kardashian. Scott, at this point, revealed that he and Courtney weren't even sharing a bed. On an episode of Courtney and Chloe Take the Hamptons, Scott yelled at Courtney, We haven't slept together in five years. Courtney said that she needed space to think clearly without Scott sleeping by her side. I always say that if you're not sleeping in the same bed, there's a red flag. And that's just a personal opinion because I feel like it's an intimate part of a relationship. But one big scandal within this relationship was the paternity scandal. Because at some point, we didn't know whether Scott was actually the father of Courtney's child. Courtney Kardashian is facing a paternity suit. What's up guys, I'm John Bastow, and this is Buzz60. The Kardashians' eldest sister was hit with a paternity lawsuit by this man, Michael Giganti, who believes he could be the father of her firstborn son, Mason. So this model named Michael claims that he may be the father of Mason Dizik, which would be huge news. Supposedly, these two worked on a photo shoot together, and they ended up hooking up sometime after. And this Michael guy told Star Magazine, if Mason is Scott's son, more power to him. But if he's mine, I need to be with him to be part of his life. It's been eating away at me for months. Keep in mind that, um, yeah, that uh, Michael actually waited three years until Mason was three years old to file this paternity suit, which is kind of clout chaser vibes. Tabloid reports Michael claims he had unprotected sex with the TV reality star, and now he's asking for joint custody of three-year-old Mason. TMZ cites legal documents in which the male model says he met Courtney at a photo shoot in 2008, and the two hooked up in March 2009 when Courtney reportedly told him she and then boyfriend Scott Disick were on the outs. I have a feeling that this Michael guy just wanted to get some attention, and it probably added some tension to Scott and Courtney's relationship. I mean, this guy Michael was releasing pictures of himself as a child to try to compare them to Mason's to prove that he's the father, which is really bizarre because this is like a kid. Like, if you really think it's your son, then handle it privately. Don't go to the Daily Mail and give them exclusive baby pictures of yourself. Based on Giganti's math, nine months later, Courtney gave birth to Mason, and the model believes the boy bears a striking resemblance to him. Courtney has reportedly denied all his claims, and her lawyer, Sean Holly, reportedly sent Jurgenti a letter saying his allegations are false and defamatory. In this moment, Scott manned up because he was not going to have this other man claim that he's the father of his firstborn son. So Scott got a paternity test. And it turns out that Scott is the father. He went and got the test and proved that Mason is his son. Courtney told E! News, After three and a half years of rumors and lies being spread by an individual I met briefly at a photo shoot, I am setting the record straight that Scott is Mason's father. They actually Actually ended up releasing the report that showed that Scott is the father so that was settled but Scott's drinking problem in 2014 really aided in their relationship ending Courtney shares on TV that Scott wanted to go to rehab in a long overdue move Scott entered the Mountainside Treatment Center rehab facility in Connecticut to deal with his substance abuse issues. Courtney responded coldly when he returned home, moaning on Courtney and Chloe take the Hamptons. I don't even know if I want him here. Well, first of all, he's just like severely depressed. He just makes up whatever like pills he thinks he needs to take. And then if you drink with it, I don't think it's good and just yeah. stuff like that. Does he want to go? Yeah. That wasn't a confident. Yeah. I think he's just scared. 
Nobody really knows how to handle addiction, and Courtney in this moment decided to check out, and it seems like in 2014, Scott just continued to spiral. Scott Disick had a wild night in Vegas before Kris Jenner's birthday party, spraying the crowd and meeting fans in the middle of the casino. This night ended in a fight between Courtney and Scott, but the soon-to-be father of three downed a bottle of booze and shouted obnoxiously during a quiet family gathering. Courtney was quoted saying, Scott is starting to get a little sloppy. This is just exactly what I don't need. Yo, let me pop it. Yo, you a Hollywood mother man. Well, at this point, Scott's full on drunk. Scott, no, Scott. Oh my God. No, no, Scott. And we haven't even gotten to the club yet, and I'm seriously worried. I've really got to get him to slow down or we're going to have a huge problem. Seeing that clip from Vegas in 2014 reminded me of an older clip from Vegas. And I just think that Scott's been this way for a long time and it's kind of who he is. And now you're going to pay. These guys are out of control. I have to figure out a way to fix this and fix it now. I hate him. I hate him. Throwback to old Rob. I miss old Rob. I mean, I thought he'd be back by now, but I guess he's still doing his thing. But I found this one report I had to bring up to you guys because, I mean, if I was Courtney, I would have left Scott so much earlier. At some point, he was partying in the Hamptons at 2 a.m. at, I guess, a place called 10 AK. In the summer of 2014, 2014's a bad year for them. I mean, of course they broke up, but... uh. Scott reportedly put his relationship with Courtney at risk by partying with other women in the Hamptons. According to In Touch, after Scott got wasted at the Sunset Beach Hotel, he was hitting on girls left and right. An eyewitness said that he allegedly offered a woman money to suck on her toes and she let him. Then he didn't even pay her. What the he didn't even pay her, so he told her that he would pay her to suck on him. her toes, and then he didn't even pay her. Like, what in the Dan Schneider is going on here? And it seems like Scott just wanted to get himself into trouble, but couldn't get away from the media. So every little thing he did got himself in the press. Around this time in 2014, they had the worst fight of their relationship. Scott accused Courtney of emotional abandonment after the death of his parents. A source said that Scott believes that Courtney has only used him as a sp donor. And while these news articles were coming out, Scott was being hounded by paparazzi, and at some point he even kind of fought an 80-year-old paparazzi man, which I, I think he was 80. I, I, I can't believe there's like someone that old out here like following Scott Disick, but it's true. Hey Scott, are you on your best behavior with Courtney now? Everybody says you guys are breaking up. Courtney, is Scott being a good boy? Yeah. No. You're walking to the beach, dude. You're walking to the You're walking to you, you all Shut the f up. Everything okay? Get away from my car. Come on. Get away from my car. What happened? Scott run into you? He pushed me out of the way. Yeah, he should keep his hands off you. How old are you? 82. 82 and he's pushing you around? Yeah. Are you going to go to the police? No, God. Pushing around an old guy is definitely not a good look for Scott, but clearly he's going through something. Ultimately, they broke up because of cheating. That's at least what the media reports. And I tried to find like one instance that like set it off. And there is one, but there were a lot of different times where Scott was caught publicly cheating on Courtney. When his daughter Penelope Dizik was four months old in 2012, Scott spent $20,000 at the Live nightclub in Miami with Wilmer Valderrama, who is a total creep if you guys know his story with Demi Lovato. But supposedly Scott spent the night flirting with a big boot 
blonde waitress. And supposedly they took the waitress and a bunch of other girls back to Wilmer's suite. In May 2013, Scott left London's Cuckoo Club with a blonde on each arm while Courtney was in Greece with the kids filming their reality show. In May 2014, Radar reported that Scott was wasted and made out with a 21-year-old recent University of Buffalo graduate. In February 2015, a 21-year-old woman named Jessica told HollywoodLife.com that she was asked to go back to Scott's suite by a woman who was scouting for Scott. So supposedly he had like a person who worked for him or a friend who was going around asking women to go home with him to sleep with him. So that's like ugh, just such a douchebag move. But then in 2015, Scott's BFF and ex-manager David said that Scott has cheated with countless women over the years. In Las Vegas about a year ago, Scott and Tyga were partying at a strip club. Scott was doing drugs and making out with the girls. Then he grabbed two strip and went into a private room where anything can happen. So that was a handful of instances, but there were even more. Fast forward to July 2015, there was one more moment which just did it for Courtney. She decided to end it with Scott after this. So it looks like Scott was hanging out with this stylist named Chloe in France, and they were all in public, you know, cuddling with each other, acting like Courtney didn't exist. Scott's recent sighting in the south of France with Chloe was the last straw for Courtney, who dumped him over the 4th of July weekend. Courtney said, I'm literally on the verge of a mental breakdown. I can't believe this is where my life is at right now. I work so hard to keep this family together. It just makes me sad for the kids, which, oh, that is so sad for Courtney. It's so nice to see that she's like in a happy relationship now. Courtney said that Scott is not a good partner to me. I could never rely on him, depend on him for one single thing, and I didn't want to show my kids that that's okay. I love Scott, but I've been dealing with this for so long. It's definitely not good for me. At this point, I'm really trying to focus on me and the kids and make them the priority. So, oh, so good for Courtney that she like really did that. She really did make her kids the priority, which you can't say that about all the Kardashians. But after Courtney officially breaks up with Scott, he is not doing well. In October 2015, Scott Disick checks himself into rehab following his split from Kourtney Kardashian. The decision to seek help came after receiving an ultimatum from Kourtney Kardashian about being able to see their three children. Kourtney was reportedly considering seeking sole custody of the kids. So she told Scott after they broke up that he wasn't going to see his kids anymore unless he got clean, which is probably like, I mean... That's a tough thing, like providing an ultimatum to someone, but also at the same time, that could have saved him and forced him to realize that his kids are more important than getting drunk and partying all the time. But some things never change, and there's one moment where Kim Kardashian went off because Scott Disick was hiding a girl in their hotel room when he shouldn't have been. So at this point, Scott is super upset about his relationship ending with Courtney, but that doesn't stop him from trying to seek out some girls while on vacation and then bringing them back to the home, which is something that Kim definitely doesn't like because it's not only disrespectful to Courtney and their family vacation, but it's also violating their safe space. And this was shortly after she was robbed robbed in Paris, so she was probably a little bit paranoid. On trip to Dubai, Scott Disick invited a girl back to their place and then tried to hide her. Mm-hmm, hide her. Okay. This is what Kim did when she found that girl hiding in the bathroom. You're just like a Such a tramp. Get your and get the out of here. And then she left her with this. Groupie, get your and security will escort you the out of here. Hearing Kimberly go off there saying, seriously, you're just like a, whore, a tramp, get your things and get out of here. Like hearing her say those things were pretty crazy. And I wonder who that person was. Like, did we ever figure out who that like woman was? Because it sounds like Kim almost knew who she was. So after Scott and Courtney's breakup, he was struggling and he went to rehab to seek help, but it didn't solve all of his problems and there were moments on the show where you could see him involving other family members and um 
talking about his depression and how he felt and there were some sad moments i found where it sounded like he at one point wanted to take his own life his worst moments were when he was in his deepest depression like in this case when he sent chloe an alarming text chloe had kim listen in and kylie and chris can be seen visibly shocked too we need to call the police and what followed were some really heartbreaking moments I'm glad Scott is in a better place than he was in that video, but I still don't think he's in like that good of a place, like at least not where Courtney's at. But you know what? Life is a journey. We all go through it on our own. And I really think it's important to remember what type of like emotional distress he was under in 2014 when his parents died. Um, and that's probably why he was drinking and it probably was a cry for help, but E Network was just filming the entire thing. So I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Let's go ahead and open this peel box package item. It looks rather large. So it looks like it's from Jacob, and I think they're in Louisiana. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what is inside. So it looks like, oh, what is this? Let's see if there's a note in here. Dear Sloan, my husband is the second generation owner of a small custard shop in our hometown. He has launched a super cool merch line to add his own flair to the store. The custard shop is called Eskimos, and it has a mascot, the very cool Mo the Penguin. We are located in Monroe, West Monroe, and oh, in Louisiana. We love your channel and congratulate you on all your success. Oh, I want to go to your custard place. Here are some cool items to add to your collection, all designed by Jake Messer. Messier. Jake Messer. Love and support from Jordan Messer. I think Messier, Messier, M-E-S-S-E-R. And it's momerch.com, which I'll list below. That is so cute. I really want to go to your custard place now. I'm like, I need to go to Louisiana, go see Terry Joe. Let's go ahead and check this out. So right here, it looks like we have, oh my gosh, I love this. Like, why can't I, how do you have your custard place has merch? I don't even, I can't even figure out merch. <gasps> so cute, chilling out. I love the vibe. And it feels really nice too. Wow, and then we've got this one right here, this sweatshirt. Oh my gosh, I'm about to wear this for my next video. Okay, let's try it on. Ooh. Oh my god, I'm stuck. Ah, oh, look, I like it. Oh, yes, this is perfect. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. I really love the design, and congrats on your um, custard business it's so nice that you're a small like business and second generation really nice merch so i really appreciate it and i appreciate the support and i'll see you guys in a new video soon bye guys